What's up, Ryan from the I Want to Work For You podcast. Oh man, I'm like 20 episodes in right now and I want to stop and tell you about something that I've discovered. Um, and it's really, really key to kind of my whole mission in what I do. I believe that there are fundamentally some amazing organizations out there. I've interviewed cities and counties and uh, alternative energy contractors, construction companies, real estate companies, a bunch of tech companies tons of tech companies, which I clearly love interviewing because they're not just innovative in their products. They tend to also be innovative in the way they approach culture and employees. But here is my number one hypothesis that I was testing and that has proven true. A lot of great places to work, you wouldn't know unless you worked there. Let me just state that again. There are fundamentally amazing places to work amazing cultures, amazing core values, great flexibility, really cool benefits and perks that we've uncovered. But you wouldn't know that that was what it was like unless you worked there. We'll call this the chicken and egg scenario of employer branding. We have kind of these two core concepts. We have our culture, what it's actually like inside the walls, whether they're virtual or actual of our organization. And we have our brand, what we project out to the world. Most organizations have spent a significant amount of time working on their culture. Do they have a great place to work? Do they take care of their employees? Do they care about their customers? Is there alignment between employee and customer uh, experience and success so that it fits together in a win-win-win scenario? Three wins. The employees win, the customers win, the company wins, right? That's what we're looking for. A lot of organizations have spent a significant amount of time nailing that down and then stopped right there. And when they go to post a job, they just post a job description and it says nothing about what it's like to actually work there. And you might say, well, well, that's just not what anybody does. That's that's this is how we've always done it. But the fact of the matter is this is like taking and going fishing, but leaving the bait, all those juicy worms you bought in the tackle box and not pulling them out and just throwing a random hook out in the water. Why would you go to all of that work to create such a phenomenal place to work and then hide it and wait until the interview or wait until they get hired or wait until they've already worked for you for them to figure that stuff out? It really is harmful to your organization's ability to recruit. Um, and so this is uh, one of the greatest kind of discoveries and aha moments that really shouldn't have been that surprising to most organizations when you go as an outsider you read your job ads, you look at what's on your career site, you look at what's on Indeed from your employer profile. And most importantly, since 90% of all your job seekers are coming from the job boards, don't look at your career site, just go to the job boards, walk the process that the job seeker goes through and ask yourself this one question. Does this content that we're putting out there clearly project and express the promise of what it's like to work for us. You see, because that's that's what a great culture is. Cultural, culture and values and work environment and management structure. It's a promise you make to your employees that you will respond to their hard work and effort and showing up with a given situation and approach. But do we actually project that and put that promise out there on the leading edge of job seekers coming to know about our company in that very first impression. They run a search on Indeed. They look for a sales job in Utah. They see your job title and your ad. They click on it and read it. And it sounds just like everybody else. Nothing unique about it whatsoever. In fact, it probably was copied and adjusted from somebody else. And yeah, maybe you put a little blurb in there about having competitive benefits and competitive pay and all that stuff but literally it sounds just like everybody else. And while I'm there looking at this job ad, I click apply and I apply using my Indeed profile, which means I never hit your career site. In fact, you can compute this to prove me. Go and look at the number of applicants you got last month and then look at how many visitors were on your career site last month. Compare those two numbers together. I'm going to bet that you get five or 10 times as many applicants as you get career site visitors. Now, if you do the reverse of that, that would mean that less than 10 to 20% of all of your applicants have ever visited 
that career site you built. And if that's the case, it doesn't mean that it was a waste of time to build the career site. It means that you better figure out how to take that content and inject it into your ads. And you better figure out how to get job seekers after they apply to go to your career site to learn more. That right there is the biggest aha. It's, it's like Starbucks never talking about pumpkin spice lattes. They just assume that when you come into the store, you'll figure it out because you'll smell it. While that would work to a certain percent, it would also have dramatically harmed their business model because you need to lead with the hook of the story. You need to lead with the juicy stuff. You need to lead with why somebody would want to work for your company. Just this one last thing to think about as I, as I uh, close this up here, one of the big um, kind of givens in the world of, of employment is that people don't leave jobs, they leave managers. Just think about that for a minute. Now let's elongate that out. People don't leave jobs, they leave cultures, they leave organizations, they leave the man not just the manager themselves, but the management structure and everything about it. If that's true, and I think almost anybody listening to this will say fundamentally, yeah, yeah, great people, great people don't leave jobs, they leave organizations. If that's true, then it tends to fit in that great people when they look for a job are looking for, not a job, a great organization. Therefore, if you look in your job ad and you're just talking about the job and you're not talking about what it's like to work for you, then those great people are not going to be hooked enough to come and apply. That right there is the secret. And so as you continue to listen to our, our podcast, I want you to listen to this reoccurring theme. I want you to think about it over and over again. That sounds like a unique perk, a great benefit, an awesome place to work. That sounds like a great management team, a great culture, a great set of core values. Now, if I was a job seeker and I went to Indeed and I found that company's job, would I know it? Would it make sense to me? Did they spend enough time putting it in my words, in my language, in my context, that it would actually connect to my heart and my head and say, I wanna work there. And if that isn't true, then we buried the lead in news. That's what we call it. We, we hid the juicy stuff. We, we are waiting for some reason. Most likely that reason is, well, it's just what we've always done. And since we're not being forced to change, we're just going to keep doing that same thing and wondering why we don't get enough qualified candidates for our jobs. Well, today that's your answer. Pass this on to your team. Trust me, this is the secret to increasing applicant flow by 50 to 300%. This one simple concept. Do you put in your ads and out there in the world, do you project why you're a great place to work? Thanks so much for watching. We'll talk to you later.